when it looks like there's trouble or this is going to happen or that's going to happen, that's when you put the joy of the Lord in your mouth and, and go to your joy scriptures and you act on it and you realize that if I don't have joy, I'm not going to be strong in this situation. The pressures of life attempt to steal your joy. Today on The Believer's Voice of Victory, Gloria Copeland reminds you to put the Word of God first place in your life and allow the joy of the Lord to be your strength. Now let's join Gloria. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. We're talking about something that's really vital to our well-being, the fruit of the Spirit. This is the fruit of the reborn Spirit not the spirit without God, but when we get born again, our spirit man has the ability to produce the fruit of the spirit. And we talked about love and peace and joy. This says in the Habakkuk, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the uh, God of my salvation. Habakkuk 3.18 yet I will. See that? We decide we're going to have joy. We will rejoice. There's always something around that'll get your joy. You just have to be determined and know that the joy of the Lord is my strength. It belongs to me. I'm not giving it up. No matter what comes, whatever, what does the Bible tell us to do? We roll the care over on the Lord and He cares for us and he takes care of it. Hallelujah. So we can have joy all the time, even if there's pressure, even if there's problem. Faith believes it receives when it prays. And so faith takes the answer when it prays. So faith should not be depressed or feel sorry or neglected or sad. That's not faith. It can't be that way and neither can joy be sad. So this says in Habakkuk, I yet will I rejoice, even when things are all bad in that scripture. It says, yet will I rejoice in the Lord and I will, see that will? I will joy in the God of my salvation. Luke 1, uh, 47, Mary said, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So we make a a determination. Well, you know, there's going to be tests and trials in this life. There could be tests in, in uh, sickness and disease or, or poverty or whatever. You know, you might need a job. What do you do? You don't quit. You stay in the Lord. You stay in the Word. You yield to the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. You don't let the devil steal your peace. You don't let him get you out of love. It says uh, uh, in the... Uh, in the Deuteronomy 26, that we serve the Lord with joy. Uh, serving God should not be a, a drudgery or something we have to work our way through. If it's a drudgery, you're not doing it right. There are things that you don't know. It's a delight to serve God. It's a delight to be blessed and to know where you're going and to know the have the assurance of I'm in the will of God. I know He's working for me. I know He's blessing me. I know He's helping me. So you release joy like you release faith out of your mouth and from your heart. When you begin to have any kind of sadness, any kind of bad news, any kind of pressure to cause you to want to talk unbelief and doubt, say, no, I'm not doing that. I have the joy of the Lord. I serve the Lord with joy. That's what Deuteronomy 26 says. Psalm 23 is a picture of the fullness of life in God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, hallelujah. He causes me to lie down in green pastures. Glory to God. And uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we know, no wonder the devil tries to come get our joy because that's where our strength is. That's where our power is. If uh, somebody said, it may have been Jerry, Savelle said, if, if uh, the devil can't steal your joy, he can't get your good. So you can understand why Satan would try to get us out of joy. The Bible just says, as we've talked about, the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
So when we get sad and when we get down, we get depressed and we start believing the devil's lies, uh, we don't have much power. Power goes out when doubt comes in. And so we, we settle in on the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. We know that uh, the, uh, the scripture says to do all things in joy and opposite of this is dread and fear. Here, here, now listen, if you, if you have these things trying to come on you, you know it's the devil. So what does the Bible say to do when the devil comes with his lies? Resist him and he will flee from you. That, that's, that, that is a promise. You resist the devil, he's got to flee from you. So it says uh, in my notes here, I, I have do all things in joy. The opposites of this are dread, the opposites of joy are dread, fear, disappointment, anger, delusionment, sadness, resentment, selfishness, hurt. When you begin to feel, you get your feelings hurt, you're just asking for trouble. You're letting your guard down. What does love do? Love forgives. If somebody's done you wrong, forgive. Uh, here's an opposite of joy, strife and bitterness. The, Lord, uh, the Word says in Deuteronomy 26 that God's people serve in abundance of all things. God wants our life and surroundings intact so that our thoughts and joy of life are unhindered in order that you and I are in a continual rejoicing in and for Him and His goodness. Now, when things don't look bad, when things aren't going our way, we don't, we don't get sad. We don't quit. We don't get depressed and down, start talking negative. I'm talking about you and me. We don't do that. We know better. We take it by faith and we begin to say words against that situation, words of faith that's in the Word of God, that's in our eyes, in our ears, in our heart, and we say it out our mouth and we say, no, you don't, Satan. God meets all my needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'll not accept a bad report. I'll not accept the, the report of unbelief. I'll not accept the, the report that I'm going to live and I, uh, that I'm not going to live, that I'm going to die young. No, I won't have that report. You know that song, Whose Report Will You Believe? Well, when bad news comes, and bad news comes, you can watch it all day long on the news, when bad news comes, we don't accept it. You don't accept it. I don't accept it. We say, no, you don't. You know, they start talking about your finances like they're an authority on your finances. We're going to have a recession. There's going to be a depression. This is happening. That's happening. People are getting laid off. And, and you know, if you watch the news and believe it, there's no way you're going to have any faith. If you watch the news, you need to talk back to it. And you need to say, I'm not going to be laid off. I have a good job. My job is intact. Even if I got laid off, it'd be because I was going to get a better job. Satan does not know how to handle a positive, strong faith, confession. And you and I can't put it out. We can't do that unless we spend time in the Word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. God wants our life and surroundings intact, so intact that your thoughts and joy of life are unhindered in order that you're in a continual rejoicing in and for Him and for His goodness. And when things don't look good, that's when you really better rejoice. When it looks like there's trouble or this is going to happen or that's going to happen, that's when you put the joy of the Lord in your mouth and, and go to your joy scriptures and you act on it and you realize that if I don't have joy, I'm not going to be strong in this situation. How do you get strong in a, in a tough situation where you're under threat of something? You go to the Word. You see what the Word says. You look and see how faith works and what it says about God will take, He'll meet your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Glory to God, His riches and glory. His riches and glory are intact. You know, there may be a depression in the world. There may be a recession. There may be a lack of jobs out here in the world. But if we're born again, 
Our citizenship, the Bible teaches, is in heaven, not when we die. It says our citizenship is in heaven now. We are citizens of heaven, hallelujah. We're born again, and you should be filled with the Holy Ghost, and you should be strong in the Word of God, knowing what belongs to you. This Bible, this is your inheritance. This is what belongs to you, hallelujah. God so wants your life and surroundings intact that your thoughts and joy of life are unhindered in order that you are in a continual rejoicing in and for Him and His goodness. Regardless of what our surroundings say to us, we say to them that we are blessed and we prosper and we are in health. Hallelujah. We have scripture on it. Glory to God. God brought them forth with silver and gold, the Bible says about the, about the Hebrews. And there was not one, say not one, there was not one feeble one among their tribes. When they came out as slaves from slavery, I should say, when they came out from slavery, they came out strong. They came out blessed. They came out with silver and gold. Glory to God. And if they can do it, if God can do it for, for slaves, he can certainly do it for you and me. And he will if we'll give him an opportunity. All natural things for fullness can be present, but without his presence, they don't produce joy. Joy is a spiritual force. And uh, uh, with no worried thoughts, fretful thoughts, in, in the abundance of all things, and our joy promotes our, it helps undergird faith. Joy comes along and undergirds our faith. It's a spiritual force just like faith is. We yield to it. The Garden of Eden was a delight to look at and to enjoy. The food was delightful and pleasant. The surroundings were pleasant to the eye. Touch, taste, hearing, and smell. Everything in the Garden of Eden was perfect. Why? Because God made it that way. That's what he wanted for his family. That's what he wanted for his man and woman and their offspring. A perfect environment. Perfect. They just had one do not. Think about that. One do not. Do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But Satan came and he tempted them. And he said, God doesn't want you to be as smart as he is. He doesn't want you to know these things. That's, you should partake of this. And we know they did and we know the rest of the story. What happened in the Garden of Eden, even though everything else was perfect, they disobeyed God. They did what he said not do and they fell. They fell. They died spiritually. They died spiritually. Now, you and I, we've got to do what God says. We can't be listening to the unbelief of the world and thinking, well, you know, I may lose my job. I'll probably do this. I'll probably do that. They'll probably lay me off. No, we're not of that group. Our God meets our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we release joy every morning. You ought to have a time with God every morning. Don't go out there in the world without talking to the Lord and praying and getting your, getting your day straight, casting your care over on the Lord. We release our faith on purpose as circumstances, even as circumstances and the devil try to steal our joy. We say, no, you don't, devil. You're not getting my joy. This is my joy. I am blessed. I will be blessed. I have been blessed. I am blessed. I will be blessed. Love and joy and peace are three forces that help us to maintain the blessing in, in this life. Love is, puts us in obedience to the Word of God. Joy is the result of the Word of God. Joy comes to us through the Word, and it's a force. Joy is a force that manifests. Peace, that means uh, the definition of peace is nothing missing, nothing broken. That's available to us in God. He is our Father. Glory to God. We're, we're not adopted. We're born into this family. It belongs to us. The blessing belongs to us. So when the world starts talking about lack and, and layoffs and problems, that's not our highest uh, 
a dependency. That's not, that's not who determines what happens in my life because I'm a born again child of God. I'm a citizen. The Bible says I already am a citizen of the kingdom of heaven and I operate in that kingdom by the word of God. I believe what God says. I obey God. I say what he says and, uh, and troubled times don't belong to me. And trouble, if you're born again, troubled times don't belong to you. But you know, you need to find out what does belong to you, that the blessing is yours no matter what's going on in this world. The blessing is yours and healing is yours and divine health is yours. I'm going to pray for your healing today and your, and your prosperity Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person listening to this broadcast. I thank you, Lord, for the healing anointing now flowing into them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Healing, by your word says, by your stripes, Jesus, we were healed. We were healed, we are healed. And we take that healing now, and I commend sickness and disease to come off of your body off of your mind, out of your life in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it. Sickness, go. Uh, fear, go in Jesus' name. Unstableness, go in the name of Jesus. And you be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Take your healing now. I don't care what it is, heart trouble, cancer, the Spirit of God knows no problems in healing any situation. Hallelujah. So we take our healing, we take our peace. If you're worried about something, the scripture says to roll your care over on the Lord. Or you could say roll your worry over on the Lord. Whatever's worrying you, don't take it anymore. Pray about it. Believe you receive God's answer. Believe you receive his help and roll it over on him and go from that place of prayer in peace. Hallelujah. We take our healing, we take our peace, we take our well-being. If you need a job, call it in. You're a believer, say, job, the best job I ever had. I call you in in the name of Jesus. You come to me now in Jesus' name. Come to me now. I believe I receive it. Those are big prayer words. I believe I receive it. When you pray, you take it. If you haven't taken it, you haven't released your faith. And then you ask the Lord, to, if you're believing for a job, ask him to lead you and direct you to where you should go and what you should say when you get there. Hallelujah. And we don't worry. First Peter 5 says, roll all your care over on him. Why? Because he cares for you. God cares about us. He's interested in us. Uh, you say, well, it doesn't look like he is. Well, maybe you're not giving him anything to work with. You know, f faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're not hearing the word of God, you're, your faith's not working. So you look up scriptures and you get what you want from the word of God. What says, uh, you know, if you're believing for a job, say you believe you receive it when you pray, you take it, you do what he says in Mark and you receive the best job you've ever had. How do you do that? You just don't let the devil lie to you. When he comes to tells you you're not gonna get something, rebuke him and resist him is what the Bible says. Resist him and rebuke him out of your life and don't listen. Amen? I'll be right back. We met very early in her life. She was just 14. <laughs> And uh, when I met her, uh, I guess we went together almost four years, didn't we? And, and before we got married. We were married two weeks and he had to go to Korea in the Air Force. We were both saved before we were married. My grandfather was a Baptist preacher. And uh, when my father and mother, we were small, we always had family prayer and, and at night and devotions. And, and we didn't just read the Bible, we got down on our hand, on our knees and, and prayed. And you know, that did something to me. Ann and I got married, we agreed that we were gonna continue that. But anyway, we had devotions with our children. And, and 
God, I mean, we prayed, and we'd get down on our knees and pray. That's the way I thought, you know, is the best way to do it. <laughs> we had, uh, were raising our children in that little church, and um, we were, we would, I, we can both remember coming home on Sunday and saying to each other, there has to be more. There has to be more. This is just not enough. And there were some ladies that were going to Stanton, Virginia to hear Brother Copeland. And I'd never heard of him, and I thought, they said, oh, he's good, you've got to come. When I came home, I was, it was just, from then on, I found him on TV after he started his TV programming. And the magazines, when they were just a little two pages of whatever, and it was so exciting. When uh, Brother Copeland uh, first started his ministry, we got a tape from him. Yeah. And we were just just baptized in the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and all. Yeah. And we really began to feed on the Word. The ministry itself has been in our family all those years. And our children all have, they all enjoy, they were all born again and love God. And so I was a teenager at the time and uh, had given my heart to Jesus, um, but was checking out all of this uh, information about the Holy Spirit and, and a powerful walk with God. Um, and so that was the first time I heard of Brother Copeland. Shortly after that, we began to get his literature and things of that nature in our home. And I saw, um, uh, while my parents had been Christians, I saw a newness to their walk with God and the relationship with each other. We're definitely a family of faith. Um, you know, I, we've talked a little bit about our, our motto, that um, we, we press in to live happy, free, strong, long. We want to be fully supplied. We want to have lots of fun until we're done. <laughs> we want to go full stride till we're satisfied. And then have a peaceful passing to the other side. My mom and dad are faithful every morning. You know, that's part of their routine is that they move their bodies and they worship the Lord. Um, and Gary and I walk our neighborhood, we ride our bikes. Um, my mom and I uh, do a 10K annually each year as a, a mother-daughter tradition. So we do what we know to do in the natural, but we lean on the Word of God. I think we all need to take care of this temple the temple of the Holy Ghost. We stay on the Word, we exercise, we eat right, and we get plenty of rest. There's no reason why we can't live long and strong because um, that's God's best for us. Frequently when we visit my mom and dad on Sunday evenings, we'll finish the evening around that dining room table praying, the four of us praying, and the presence of the Lord will come um, and, and show us things and speak to us it's important, um, as uh, Brother Copeland said, um, uh, you get immersed, and when you, um, you know, when you come to something like this or the Believers Convention, and you spend a, a repetitive amount of time where you're just getting the Word, and there's just breakthroughs that wouldn't come any other way than than just spending a lot of time in the Word like that. The benefit of being in the Word and for our family has been to see our children. Uh, be raised knowing God and loving Jesus and raising their children now in the same way. The blessings of the Lord that we speak over our children, our grandchildren, is priceless. And I believe that a family of faith is lauding out to generations yet unborn, making way for them to have the option to choose life, choose you this day whom you may serve. And our family says, ask for us we're going to serve the Lord. Living long and finishing strong is God's promise to us. I'm counting on that glory to God. I'm living long and living strong. Hallelujah. What an encouraging testimony about living in the blessing, being healthy and whole and prosperous. That's the blessing. When everyone is well, you can spend quality time together as a family the Word works when you put it to work. Believe and receive and take it by faith. Fill your eyes and your ears with the Word of God so faith will get down into your heart. And if you want to watch more good news and good testimonies, then go to kcm.org and they're on there. Today's offering day, and I want to give you a scripture about 
your finances. I'm telling you, God's interested in your finances. Did you know he's interested in the healing of your body? He's interested in prospering you. Why is that, God? Because he is a good God and he wants good things for us. Let's look at 2 Corinthians. This was a very important scripture for me financially. Remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will reap sparingly and grudgingly. I get by that that if we want to reap a harvest, we don't think sparingly and we don't think grudgingly. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to someone will reap generously and with blessings. Let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purposed in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion, for God loves... He takes pleasure in, he prizes above all other things and is unwilling to abandon a quick to do it, cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the way we want to give. And God is able, verse 8 says, and God is able to make all grace. This is the big one right here. No matter what you're in financially, no matter what your situation is, whether it takes $100 to fix it or 100000 to fix it, God is able to make all grace and every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always... You be a sower and you'll always be having a crop so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, requiring enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. So I believe that as you sow today, I'm in agreement with you that you are prospering. You are increasing. Your needs are met. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Stay centered on God's Word. Stay, keep your thoughts tuned to Him. Go to church this weekend. Get in a church that preaches you the Word of God and you come out of there and you're ready to face the week. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God's Word works. And as you sow, you believe God for the return and you believe God to prosper and believe him to stay in health. These things belong to us. I'll be back on Monday and I'll see you then. This is Gloria Copeland reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Build your faith and be transformed by the Word of God. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. Continue your studies with this week's product offer. Order your copy today and let these word-based teachings help you live in victory. Receive God's grace abounding toward you and live in the blessing. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The 2013 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 14th through 16th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. The 2014 Branson Victory Campaign, February 27th to March 1st with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. The 2014 Southwest Believers Convention, June 30th through July 5th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas.